This just made sense. Why? Do I need to explain? I feel like those that know me, you know me. If you know, you know. Those that don't, eh, well, you know, you'll learn. The Supreme Court has held repeatedly that I don't think it would be able to If you can't keep your opponents from scoring, just Black excellence alert. Black excellence alert. Black man on the microphone about to make a statement about black excellence. 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 That's right, folks. We're starting this week's episode off with another black excellence alert. You heard the drop. Once again, we have another black excellence alert. This one comes from uh, these two young sisters. Uh, They started an anti-bullying clothing line. They got the attention of Lupita Nyong'o, uh, known mostly from Black Panther. Her other movies, a great actress, beautiful um, uh, actress there, as well as Alicia Keys and even the likes of Nike. Uh, so they're they're verified, y'all. They're official. One sister is only 10 years old, and uh, she launched the T-shirt uh, line or T-shirt uh, sensation, I guess you could say, uh, to combat racism. Uh, as a child growing up, uh, she was being bullied for the color of her skin. Uh, her name is Karis Rogers. Uh, she's 10 years old, beautiful chocolate young girl. And uh, after being bullied, she decided uh, to start her own clothing line. Uh, so she teamed up with her older sister, Taylor Pollard. And the name of the clothing line is Flexin in My Complexion. First of all, that name is dope. Uh, so if that was her idea, She's got a lot of potential. This girl's only 10 years old, and she's already got her own own clothing line. Uh, I'm in my 20s, and I don't. So she's got a one-up on me. Uh, I need to. She's putting a battery in my back. I need to get my game up. I need to get some Just Made Sense uh, shirts for the podcast. I, I got some work to do, but I want to give a shout-out. Karis Rogers and her older sister, Taylor Pollard, on their clothing line, Flexin' In My Complexion. Uh, you could find them online. Just go ahead and Google flex, Flexin' In My Complexion. And yeah, shout out to them, uh, these uh, sisters doing their thing. Once again, this is our Black Excellence Alert for the week. I can turn my next guest right here. Chick-fil-A. A couple unexpectedly uh, delivered their baby girl at a Chick-fil-A. Yeah, so that headline, the headline right away is kind of like, okay, that's interesting. So um, it looks like there was no time to get to the the uh, the hospital. There's no time to get to the delivery room. So uh, this Chick Fil A location became the delivery room. So she has basically some benefits and perks for life. Uh, one of them is she will get free Chick Fil A food for her entire life. Um, I wasn't born in Chick-fil-A, but I must say I wouldn't be mad at free Chick-fil-A for the rest of my life. So like I said, Chick-fil-A, if you would like to be a sponsor, advertiser on Just Made Sense, holla at me. Uh, Hit me at the email, justicereal at gmail.com, Twitter, IG, you know what I mean? You know, show love. I love Chick-fil-A. Y'all got great chicken, great waffle fries, great lemonade, great sauce. Yo, Chick-fil-A, let's do something, man. Let's let's make something happen. Uh, But anyway, this baby girl... Uh, she will get free Chick-fil-A food for her life and a guaranteed job when she turns legal age to work, which I think is 14 or 16. Uh, so shout out to her. Shout out to her parents for being dope, for saying, you know what? Now nah, we're just going to have the baby right here in the Chick-fil-A. Uh, we're going to make it happen. So, you know, that's that's literally making lemonade out of lemons. That's yeah. So shout out to them uh, for being dope parents, having their child in Chick-fil-A. That's a story. You know, you could talk about that for life. Not only does the daughter have a great story, but the parents, like, I, I would be talking about that all the time. Just, you know, telling people, you know, we had, you know, we had our daughter in, uh, in Chick-fil-A, right? You know, right around the corner over on, uh, on, on P Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She was born uh, right there in front of the uh, dollar menu. So, uh, yeah, now we get free Chick-fil-A, uh, you know, um, uh, for the rest of our life. Uh, great, great story. I think that's pretty awesome. Let's do business. Let's make it happen. All right, check this headline out. A man arrested for naked yoga at Planet Fitness. Um, This is not a joke. This really happened. This was in the news. This was reported. Yes, he was arrested at a Planet Fitness uh, because he thought it was a judgment-free zone. (laughs) That was 
That was his excuse. That was his mind frame going into this Planet Fitness. And it's true. I don't have a Planet Fitness uh, membership. Uh, that's not the gym I go to. But from what I've heard from people I know that do, that do go to Planet Fitness, that's like their thing. Like their thing is like, this is a judgment free zone. This is, you know, you know, come in and work out and feel comfortable. And, you know, it's one of those type of things. So, now, I'm not, best believe, I'm not justifying this man uh, for doing naked yoga in a public gym, uh, public atmosphere, but this headline is is crazy. Uh, but yeah, the article reads, man is accused of walking into Planet Fitness, dropping his clothes, and working out nude. Yeah, and he told investigators he thought he was in a, in a judgment-free zone, so <laughs> I don't know if he's still locked up. I don't know what his bail was, but uh, yeah, that happened. Um, you know, I, yeah, I really hope I don't see that ever at my gym. I don't do yoga. You know, I play ball. I hoop, you know, on the weekends or whenever I can. And, you know, get the muscles right during the week. Not me. You know, do a few sets. You know how that goes. Throw a few reps up. Uh, but no, I definitely wouldn't want to look to my left or right and see somebody, you know, dropping, dropping their, uh, their sweats or their shorts and, uh, you know, get, getting on the bench press and, uh, you know, being naked that, that wouldn't, that probably be my last day at that gym. Uh, that that membership would be canceled. I would be gone. So yeah, uh, we, we'll hope this is not a trend in 2018. We're gonna hope this doesn't continue. Uh, my main concern is I'm just hoping he had a towel and he was wiping down the equipment because uh, it's not healthy, you know. Um, so I'm I'm hoping even if he didn't wipe <laughs> wipe down whatever machines he was using or the yoga mat he was on, uh, I hope somebody came by and you know just threw a bunch of alcohol on it or threw a bunch of uh, you know, Clorox wipes or hit it with some of that, uh, that real germ free Lysol because yeah, that's not, that's not good. My Starbucks is where I get my favorite roast with the perfect amount of room. And it's where I meet for book club. Our place or yours? Get the Starbucks coffee you love in every cup. Other people, I'm sure. The, the, court the Supreme Roe Court has held repeatedly saying that Seattle Seahawks have won. Run, bitch, leave, baby, four. What can baby, you four. tell them, brothers? About an hour, going, if you can't them. keep your because opponents from scoring, just line. outscore them yourself. All right, y'all. Episode three of Just Made Sense. We have another illustrious guest, another professional Somebody else who was verified in their field. Uh, somebody else who, hey, they, they get in the bag doing what they love. This episode three of Just Made Sense, we have WNBA player Erica McCall of the Indiana Fever, number 22. You can catch her at the forward position. Erica, how are you this evening? I'm doing well. How about yourself? You know what? I'm doing good. I'm glad to have you on the phone lines able to catch you in the, in the middle of the season so that's always great but i definitely want to welcome you to just made sense and i want to thank you uh for joining us on uh, on episode three absolutely glad to be here thank you very much and you know we might as well jump right into it no pun intended in your second year as a pro in the league out of stanford do you fully feel acclimated to the league are you used to the pro life what stage are you at right now i could say i'm uh pretty much acclimated i mean some things are still a little uncomfortable for me. Okay. Um, but as far as uh, being with a team, playing with a team, I feel pretty comfortable. I mean, we're struggling this year, so, you know, that's always going to be an uncomfortable feeling. But, you know, I'm on a team with a great group of girls that push me every day, that make me better. And so um, I'm proud to be on, you know, the Indiana Fever, and we'll, we'll, we'll push through and we'll get over the Four-year varsity starter. Captain for three years, y'all. Three-time yeah. champ. Set records in points, rebounds, and blocks. Four-time area MVP. Two-way. You said it could have been five? <laughs> <I know. laughs> it should have been five? <laughs> yeah, I have my, my friend you're talking about. Alex, Alex Green is out sitting right next to me. Ah. We could we could have had we could have had some more rings for sure. <laughs> oh, I, I hear you. I hear you. That's the, yeah. I, I'm I'm not mad at that. Two-way All-American because you were a McDonald's All-American and also a WBCA. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, got it. And then to top it all off, California Gatorade Player of the Year in 2013. That's that's like the top of the top of the top when it comes to uh, high school careers. I mean, would would you agree that you 
you pretty much killed it uh, in high school at the prep level. <laughs> Yeah, high school was definitely fun. I'm proud of myself for for how far that I've that I've gotten high school. So it was pretty cool. Now I do need to find out because I'm, I'm I'm not sure. Maybe it is. Let me know. Put put me on. Uh, is, is the jersey retired? Is it officially retired at, at Ridgeview? It is not retired. Wow. It's still active. Still wow. Active. Still active. It's all right. You know. Uh, hopefully, you know when little, you know, younger players, you know, I play at Ridgeview, you know, wear my jersey. Hopefully, okay. they're inspired and you know want to work hard. So I have no problem that it's not retired. But okay, uh, you know that'd be a huge honor. I hear you. Okay, so because I'm the hype man, because this is just made sense, because it is my show, I'm gonna gas you up. I'm <laughs> I'm gonna put some. I'm gonna put the battery in, and I'm gonna let all my listeners know those who know. Yeah, th- this needs to happen. This this jersey needs to be retired. <laughs> you know, wherever the sports bars are in town that got all the football guys up, they need to have an Erica McCall jersey up. Whether it's uh, oh, high I school, that. whether <laughs> it's Stan- I'm just saying, whether it's Stanford or whatever. Because, like I said, you you got state records. Like you you official. Like this is not. <laughs> it's a game, but it's not a game. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like if we went to Akron, they got all LeBron stuff in every Applebee's. Mm-hmm you know in cleveland so i'm you know somebody i don't know ridgeview uh whatever department you know needs to do that somebody hey they we got to get that jersey retired (laughs) we got to get an autographed shoe in there you know something so you know i'm gonna be the the flag holder on that one i'm blowing the whistle on the whole operation because uh yeah that that, yeah i you know that that's my opinion um i'm sure other people probably feel the same way uh just because you know if they saw you play or saw your highlights or know about your stats and your journey uh it's definitely well deserved and well earned so i'm telling you that you know you you keep well, thank you. you look you can keep being your humble self and i'm not mad at that <laughs> at all but i'm gonna definitely be the one to, to pump you up and just know you know that that should be the case i'm letting you know right now okay thank you i appreciate it. i'll jump over to stanford uh you were two-time all pack 12 um at stanford for me personally uh obviously from california i've never been to stanford uh never been to the campus never been uh, to the farm, nothing like that. Can you describe to me uh, your four years uh, at Stanford? All right. Well, I'm not going to be modest about this one because it's the number one university in the world. Okay. Um, okay. Talk about <laughs> it. Talk your talk. It's the number one university in the world. I think it's the, be- the most beautiful campus, has the most beautiful campus in the world. Um, and you just never know who you're going to meet. You know, your roommate could be, uh, you know, a future CEO of a billion dollar company. It's just that amazing. And the resources that they have there is amazing. But the culture there is is top notch. You know, the people that I played with are top notch, and um, it's just a great program. I'm proud that I graduated from there, and um, it's just an amaz- amazing culture to be a part of. Absolutely, absolutely. I definitely got to get up there and visit and and see the campus and you know tell people that hey, just so you know, I got her on episode three of my podcast. <laughs> she was a guest. We chopped it up. We had fun. Uh, but but tell me this uh, when you went on your visit uh whether it was unofficial or official were you hooked right away or no you were like you know what i still need to check out uconn or i still need to check out you know ucla what, what was your you know kind of first you know how did you analyze it that first time you went or had were you already you know locked in right um it was my second visit okay so i was pretty open-minded about everything um it was an amazing visit actually because um Stanford, we went to the football game and Stanford had beat SC. I think SC was like great, like number two in the country. Um, and we beat them. It was a big upset win. And we like, everyone went down the field. You know, they had the barricade, the, the field post and everything. It was a, it was an incredible feeling. So, um, and Shanae Wumake, you know, which is an amazing WMA player, she was my host. Um, and she really just really hooked me into the campus. You know, I already had, I had a visit for UCLA, but you know, Really, I kind of already knew that Stanford was the place I wanted to go. Um, and the visit was is so fun and so memorable. So it definitely uh, locked me in. Wow. And, and for those out there, uh, uh, guys and girls who are, who are coming up playing prep sports, no matter what it is, um, would you say that that visit is very important to take no matter what school it is, that you, you should definitely go and check out the campus and, and the vibe around the, uh, around the school? Absolutely. You know, it's important that you – not only get to connected with, you know, future teammates and your coaches, but also just the people that go to the school there. You know, you never know what type of vibe that the school gives unless you truly go visit it. Um, and so I think it's super important um, that students go take that visit um, because you never know um, what you'll do, what you'll see, um, the vibe that you'll get from it. So it's very important. 
Absolutely. Now, now I don't know how long the list is. I know you are highly recruited, so it probably is a long list. I wouldn't doubt it. Um, but what, or, you know, give me, a, uh, I'll say maybe five other places you might have visited or visit you took, you know, before you actually officially committed and signed uh, to to uh, Stanford. Uh, right. So um, I went to UCLA and UConn. Um, those are my other top two schools, so I visited them. Um, Duke was kind of right there with them. SC, maybe North Carolina. Those are probably some other schools that I'd probably visit. Um, I, you know, I really think I wanted to stay in California, be close to the family. When I went to UConn, it was just, first of all, it was freezing. So I never thought <laughs> I'd be able to. It was snowing, and they called it a, a brisk day. Wow. I it, <laughs> wow. I okay. thought it was the coldest day I've ever been in. Right. So, um, I knew I probably couldn't make it out there. The Stanford was the perfect place, and they have great weather out there, of course. But, you know, of course, I'm close to family. They can come out and see me play a lot. So I knew it would be a perfect match for me. Nice. I'm glad you said that because I – you being from California, me as well, I, I assume that that kind of played a part in, uh, you know, your decision making, wanted to either be close to home or, you know, close to weather that you're used to. And, yeah. you know, you're already familiar with the region. Absolutely. What were your thoughts going in uh, as a freshman? Did you have concerns, you know, when it came to, you know, whether you're going to start or come off the bench or you know, uh, travel things that you're going to be playing in the Pac-12 against a lot of these right. big, you know, D1 schools? Did you did you have any of that? Or was there any, you know, excitement or energy that you felt, you know, going into that, that first freshman year? Um, definitely a lot of excitement. Um, some nervous, too. Um, just being a part of a, you know, top five program, you know, for basketball and academics. It's, it's nerve-wracking. But my teammates made me very comfortable. My coaches made me very comfortable. You know, I was nervous because we were going to be playing against top-notch teams. I think UConn was like our third game of the year, um, and so it was it was definitely nerve-wracking to be a part of that, but also um, humbling and exhilarating. You know, just to be you know knowing that I, I worked hard to get to that position. Um, you know, I knew I probably wasn't going to get the most minutes because I was playing behind an All-American. Um, she was the best player in the country, really, and so I knew I wasn't going to get the most minutes of, out of that. But I knew I would get top-notch mentoring from her. And, you know, which I did, you know, with friends to this day. And she still mentors me to this day. So um, my freshman year is a, an absolutely amazing experience. Went to the Final Four that year. Um, I learned so much. And it definitely helped me get to the point to where I am now. And also as well, get to the point where we made it to the Final Four my senior year. Um, just having that own experience, being a part of the Final Four, really helped us out. Um, really calmed my nerves. Wow, that's that's a fantastic start to to a career in college playing playing college college ball just the first year you already go to the final four i don't i don't think there's any other way you could top that besides winning i would assume right right, <laughs> right. yeah now yeah, it's pretty pretty amazing yeah now, now tell me this going into stanford uh just because it's so popular nowadays for so many athletes um they either go one and done or they do a few years and maybe after a big season you know, they bounce and go pro or go play overseas. Yeah. Did you already have it in your mind that you were going to be there for your whole, your entire, you know, four years or no, you, you know, you, you weren't sure on that? Um, yeah, that was my goal. Um, you know, Stanford's a school where you go there for the degree. I mean, um, playing there is pretty cool, but you know, degree is the absolute bonus, you know, mm -hmm. when basketball stops, the basketball stops bouncing and everything's all said and done, you know, yep. what really is going to be your fallback is your degree. So I knew when I went there, I was going to go for all four years. Plus it's hard for female basketball players to leave college just because of the WNBA rule. You have to be, I believe 21 by the time the draft comes around. Um, so it's tough to leave after a certain amount of years, but I knew Stanford, I was going to be there for the full four years for sure. Wow. Wow. That's great. That That's good that you already kind of had that mindset. So there was no back and forth for you once you got there. It, you were already it was set in stone for the most part. Is that would that be, would I, would yes, that be correct in saying that? OK. Yeah. Now, I, I always like asking asking this question, especially for uh, professional athletes um, and those that play either at a high level, or professional level, whatever sport that it is, um, that if they did go to college, I always like to ask, uh, what was your major um, what did you graduate? What is your degree in? And why did you choose that uh, degree path? You know, even now, even though now, mm -hmm. of course, you're a professional athlete. Um, so I majored in uh, psychology. Um, the reason why I majored in that was because I really just like to interact with people in general. And so, um, you know, psychology is, you know, the study of the mind. 
Um, and so if you know, you really get to understand the mind, how it operates, you really can understand why people operate and why they do certain things in life. And so it's cool to be able to analyze people, you know, with my degree, you know, sometimes I use some of the classes I use and, you know, in the real world, um, just to interact with people. And so, uh, it's been a huge tool just in, just in life in general. Um, I'm really happy that I majored in it, you know, just coming from Stanford, just having a Stanford degree in general. Uh, it's an amazing accomplishment. I know it'll take me far in life outside of basketball. Absolutely. That's awesome. And, and with that, do you have plans, you know, later down the line or maybe on the side during the off season or after basketball to put that degree to work in a certain field or in a, or in a you know, certain way, maybe a talk show or Dr. Erica, you know, TV show. <laughs> you, you got plans like that or what, what as far as your degree goes, you know, would you like to see done, you know, either after your career or even even during? Like I said, you know, the degree, it's great for just interacting with people in general. Um, you know, myself, I like to kind of get into the entertainment business. Um, some people said, you know, I should get into commentating. We'll see. <laughs> Still thinking about that. But um, a talk show would be great. You know, I just love entertaining people, you know, and basketball entertain. But, you know, just outside of basketball, just talking, cracking jokes, making people smile. And so, you know, with that, you know, you have to learn, know your audience. You have to know how to interact with your audience. And so with my degree, I can kind of use that um, as a tool, you know, to help me succeed with that. Erica, that sounds good to me. Like, you know, look, if there's an opening for a, for a co-host on Just Made Sense, I'll let you know. <laughs> you know, I know you got your degree. You could always send the resume. We could validate that. And, Absolutely. You know, we'll I'm, talk about this afterwards. Exactly. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that. You know, you know, we're doing all right. We got a few uh, few advertisers. So, you know, I can give you a little bag. But, you know, we, all right. we, we're getting there. But, you know, I want you to get, get your WNBA on, you know, for now. And then, you know catch you in a few years and you know we could we could make something happen <laughs> Sounds good. okay now i definitely got to ask you this question you being from california me being from california me still being a california resident what is life like in indiana i've never been to indiana <laughs> I, I, my mom went to purdue that's the closest connection i have okay uh, yeah. I've, I've flown over indiana i know larry birds from indiana yes uh what is indiana life like um <laughs> uh, indiana life is an adventure <laughs> um, the weather is just, um, you know, I really don't like the weather there. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> to be honest. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm not used to humidity. I'm not used to Ooh. it being in the summer. And then, you know, just, just showers, just showers of rain just come down on me for like 10 minutes. And then the next, in the next five minutes, you know, it's bright and sunny. So, <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my God. <laughs> the weather I am not a fan of, but okay. outside of the weather, it's a huge basketball. So, you know, Indiana is the basketball state yep. so no matter what we're always going to get a great crowd you know just it's just a big basketball atmosphere people love the game there and that's why i love indiana because people love the game and people love to watch and enjoy it and experience it um so the people there are amazing the fans they're amazing i i enjoy being there outside of the weather um and uh, it's just a fun time really awesome awesome now california of course is known for many things entertainment traveling you know, you're from here, so you know the deal. California, is, it's, it's not a bad state. I think you would agree with me on that. We, I think it's the best state. Okay, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, we do it all right out here. Um, Food-wise, you know, say if I fly to Indiana to catch a game or, you know, I get stuck in the airport or I got a layover, you know, right. how, how's the food out there? They got some food spots that, that you like? Anything similar to Jay's Place or something like that, you, you know? <laughs> yeah, there's this place called Country Kitchen that's pretty good. Okay. And surprisingly, I was so surprised I had to take a picture from it. Okay. There's a restaurant called Bakersfield's. Really? Yeah. Wow. Who would have known? It's pretty cool. In in the in the town that that for the team you play for, there is a restaurant that goes by the name of where you're from. Yes, it's pretty amazing. I was pretty hyped about that one. Okay, I'm gonna put that down on my notes so that, <laughs> so that if I'm ever in Indiana, or whatever whatever portion that is, and they got a Bakersfield. I got to get a picture next to the sign. I got to, you know, I got to check it out. And and just so you know, you're responsible for whatever my response is to the food. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm like, because you gave me the recommendation. Yeah. So I'm letting it's you. pretty good. Okay. I'm definitely, I'm, I'm shooting you a text. I'm, I'm sending you a pic because I'm like, hey, Erica, you said this spot, you know, it's it's up there. So, you know, hey, this is, this is on you here. Just let me know. Okay. I'm, and, and, this, I'm you, and this is kind of big for you to be, you know, your first time on the show, episode three. I'm just saying, you know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm putting it on you. I'm letting you know. All right. Okay. All I'll right. I'll take the blame. Now, I did have this question just because I know for me, uh, being a fan of basketball, no matter what league, NBA, WNBA, you know, all over the world, 
Um, how was it coming in, and even now, still uh, playing against you know some of the best of the best, like Diana Taurasi and right. you know the Candace Parkers? Was that were you starstruck when you first got on the court with them? Was how how was that feeling? You know, knowing that you're playing at the same level uh, and on the same court that they are. Yeah, I was absolutely starstruck. I mean, like, sometimes I had to, like, pinch myself, like, or, like, I would think in my head as I'm guarding Candace Parker, like, oh, my gosh, I'm guarding Candace Parker. Like, I was like, <laughs> like, wait, 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 let me lock in. Like, uh, sometimes I would daydream, like, this is crazy, you know, this is the stuff that you pray about, the stuff you dream about. Right. Um, and, you know, to be at that level and to play against, you know, the best players in the world, um, it's just an amazing feeling, really. It's, uh, you know really humbling you know and, and inspires me and hopefully inspires other girls that you know if you work hard you know and do what you need to do to get to where you want to be um it's, it's quite possible and so uh yeah i would definitely start struck to say the least yeah i could definitely imagine that that last portion of your answer definitely sounded like a nike commercial so you know uh <laughs> if you have an agent you might want to talk to him about some advertising because the way there you, you said you know i told you i wanted to get entertainment hey hey like uh, erica look <laughs> you know i know this so you know i'm just hey do what you got to do just don't forget about just and just made sense the podcast <laughs> like i said I every once in a while we need a guest co-host you know live uh feeds whatever it is you know we do it all so you know just know you got like i told you uh, when we set up the interview, it's open door policy. You you know that All already. Right. I like the sound of that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sounds good. Now, what I, I really want to get into is during the WNBA offseason, in the summer, you play overseas? Overseas, we make the majority of our money, the majority of our salaries. Right. Um. So last season, I played in Hungary. Um, I played in Sex Heart Hungary, a very small little town. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll be going back there again. And that's, you know, that's where everyone plays, you know, from Diana Tarazi, you know, to a player like me in their second year, that's where everyone has to go to make their money, wow. to make their living. Wow. Um, and so, you know, it's a different experience. You know, the NBA, you know, they can just stay at home and, you know, they, that's be with their friends and family and that's where they make all their money. But, you know, it's a struggle for us, but we do have to do. Um, and we still get to play the game that we enjoy, that we, you know, we dreamed about from, you know, when we were little girls. So uh, it's tough, but it's definitely quite the experience. And, you know, you do what you have to do to make your money. Hey, this is Terry Williams, president and owner of One United Bank, the largest black-owned bank and the first black internet bank in America. This is my personal invitation to you to join the Bank Black movement. We must be more purposeful about how we use our money. We need to build black, buy black, and bank black to build wealth in the black community. By moving your money to One United Bank and using your Mona, Amir, or Lady Liberty Visa debit cards with their powerful images of blackness, you show the world that black money matters so just go to oneunited.com today erica give the people uh your social where they can find you either on twitter instagram you know whatever social media you're most active on so they can follow you keep up with you and the season and and your career instagram uh at is birds the word underscore 24 and my twitter account is at eric mccall 24 thank you so much that's our episode y'all episode three of just made sense a WNBA player for the Indiana Fever number 22. That's 2-2. Erica McCall in the building. Episode 3 of Just Made Sense. Thank you so much, Erica. Thank you. Like